what's good y'all your boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out the rise of the hardy boys man the hardy boys they are a goat team in wrestling if you know anything about wrestling if you appreciate anything about wrestling then the hardy boys are a group that you definitely should have been you know aware of and and appreciate what they brought to the tag team division man um it was them edge and christian the dudley boys they revolutionized tag team wrestling team extreme man everyone loved the hardys that that's just that's just what it was man they uh are staples in the wrestling community always and forever forever future hall of famers i mean the list of accolades go on um and uh this is gonna be a dope video to check out uh wrestling premiere is the channel that we're checking this out on i've been subscribed to them for a while um so definitely go check them out link to the original video will be down below uh i'm looking forward to this man just to go back down memory lane and and to see the hardy boys their ascension to greatness man let's get into this one the tag team division in the WWF had felt like a huge priority during the Golden Age. Several strong, legitimate tag teams that excelled, the teams that felt like a big deal at times, main evented shows. The Hart Foundation, the Legion of Doom, the Rockers, but as time went on, the division lacked interest. This wasn't just a tag team problem. The WWF suffered in all areas, it's just the division felt more obvious and glaring. With the new generation in full swing, the tag teams just didn't hit the same. They're definitely memorable, no doubt about it, but because the previous teams in the golden era were top 10, it makes things look worse than they were. However, the future of the tag team division was right under their noses at the time. Emerging from Cameron, North Carolina was Matt and Jeff Hardy. Mm -hmm. The two brothers had grown up as lifelong wrestling fans and their passion was wrestling. It got to the point where both brothers trained themselves and even created their own wrestling promotion which was later known as Omega. The promotion went by other names initially and instead of wrestling in a regular wrestling ring, the brothers were having matches on trampolines. It simply came down to passion and Matt Hardy himself elaborated further in an interview. And I quote, When we would watch TV, we fell in love with wrestling, whether it was NWA or WWF. We begged our dad for a year to buy us a trampoline, and when he got <laughs> us a trampoline for Christmas, we started putting together some moves. I was always the macho man Randy Savage, and Jeff would be Sting. We would emulate our favorites, and we then decided to turn the trampoline into a ring by cutting down some trees to use as ring posts, and we tied some rope around them for the ring ropes. We then saved up for a video camera to film what we were doing. We just loved doing everything about the wrestling business, and we worked hard to follow our dreams, and here we are in 2014, still wrestling for TNA on global TV. The brothers had That's gimmicks. Crazy, Matt was high man. voltage, Jeff was Wolverine who was based on Sting. Shannon Moore and Gregory Helms joined in and this thing was slowly expanding in interest. Connections were made and they started wrestling in public. Matt Hardy had done a lot of hard work as a promoter and before he knew it, he met the Italian Stallion and from out of nowhere, they started working as jobbers on TV and this was mm -hmm. right after WrestleMania 10. It seems like a mind trip to see the Hardys in the early parts of the new generation era but with that said, the Stallion had started taking money from the brothers. He's like, oh I gave mm -hmm. you guys this opportunity guys give me some they make 300 400 they're left with 150 because he was giving them rise to the show sometime later they grew tired of him and he bailed on him once and instead of waiting or calling on him they drove themselves and told the wwf that if they want their services they should call them instead of the stallion man did have some praise from due to him instilling some knowledge of the business into the hardys but in general it was a small chapter in their careers jeff debuted as well and lived about his age at the time he was 16 however this worked to his benefit for one scott hall took him under his wing and hardy had more than positive words for him and I quote, then moving forward, Scott Hall was so kind because he thought I looked like Vanilla Ice. And the click started <laughs> calling me Ice. And I'll never forget one time he told Pat Patterson, I was like 16 or 17 too. Let's get this kid on the road. Get him seasoned. I'm not even legal yet. There's something very special to what he saw. That's he awesome, saw my future man. through whatever it was. And he believed in us every step of the way. And that's rare, man. Matt and Jeff continued wrestling Rest as in enhanced metal. And at one point, Scott. they featured in King of the Ring 1995, opening the doors for the wrestlers. They were slowly brought in and trained under Dory Funk. One advantage both men had at this point compared to others is that they had experience. Back then, it was likely a wrestler would have to pay their dues and go through a bunch of things before becoming an official member of the roster. These guys had been wrestling for years, so when they officially signed in 1998, all was good. Now, Matt and Jeff were actually pitched to join DX around this time period. Wow. You'll see moments if you look back in 1998 when we're in tights and there's several times we probably do it for like four or five weeks straight. When we come to the ring, we go up in the corners and Jeff and I are doing this and we do the DX and we're going to pledge for DX. And then eventually kind of like ended up being 
like their lackeys to a degree and pledge with them and then they were going to kind of see where it went and then maybe we could legitimately like be a part of the dx when it's all said and done mm -hmm. that that was an idea that vince russo had they didn't want to try. And DX eventually, we did it for like four or five weeks, and they said, okay, enough of that. We're not going to do this. These guys aren't quite ready. Let them do whatever. And then it just like stopped immediately and was never revisited. They continued as jobbers, but their role was more prominent. That would have been interesting, them being a part of DX. I don't know if they would have gotten the spotlight ultimately. I mean, yeah, they would have gotten the spotlight being a part of that group, but I don't know if it would have benefited them much. It's crazy how certain things happen in wrestling for a reason, and... Sometimes you may think at that moment it's not a good, you know, it's not the best of reasons or it's disappointing. But ultimately, it may be something better for you in the long run, so. The brothers featured on Heat more often, but they were mostly losing. Their opportunity to make something of themselves came after WrestleMania 15, as Michael Hayes was paired with them. They had grown up bond with Freebird previously, and Jeff Hardy said that there were pitches from Vince Russo for that team to grow beards and look more in tune with Michael Hayes. According to Jeff, Hayes wanted them to wear some old school outfits, but they ended up taking them to Hot Topic, and that's where the <laughs> iconic Hardy Boys look was created. Yeah. Why would he wear it too? I don't know. He was probably undergoing some sort of midlife crisis. Michael <laughs> Hayes at the time had started a feud with the Brood who called him out by his actual name instead of Doc Hendricks. And because of this, he grew disdain over being disrespected by these young guys. On the May 16th, 1999 episode of Heat, the Brood were victims of a bloodbath by Hayes and the Hardy Boys. This led to a series of matches which definitely stand out in the era of Attitude because it was fast-paced, high-risk, high-reward type stuff. They brought something entirely fresh to the division, no doubt about it. It also helped that these two teams were young. Back then, if you hit some Centom Bomb, the whole crowd would be looking on in amazement. Shortly mm -hmm. afterwards, the two teams faced off for the chance to challenge the Acolytes for the tag team titles. After the champions interfered and ruined everything, the match was pushed to King of the Ring. Once again, fast-paced action that leaves you wanting more, and for the Hardy Boys, it was a victory. The Acolytes heading into this title defense were destroyed by Kane the previous night, and when told by the doctor to stay in the back, they assaulted him. The Hardys went through hell. The Acolytes were 100%, but as they usually did, they were kicking ass. It came down to a stick shot in timing for the Hardys to win the Tag Team Championships. This left them absolutely speechless, but before they could finish, GTV interrupted. Well, this was a great moment for the Hardy boys. They had worked over five years to get to this point. Four and a half of those years were as jobbers. They had to work from the bottom all the way up. The Acolytes were extremely frustrated with the title loss and were desperate to rebound. The rematch of Fully Loaded involved Michael Hayes and it ended the way you expect it to, with the Acolytes victorious. They destroyed him and by the looks of it, you'd be thinking he was a rookie lost in the locker room. The Hardys decided to turn on him later on and join Gangrel to form the new brood. Why? Mm. I don't know, they fit the vibe though for sure. But in storyline, it was kind of dumb. These guys yeah. ditched Michael Hayes for somebody that had less titles than Tottenham or the Orlando Magic. That's basically what it comes <laughs> down to. Whenever something is called new in wrestling, it straight up fails because it's tied into the old thing which is way 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 better that said the new brood from a look standpoint were flat out amazing take away that entrance they still look awesome with the wet hair the red and black shirts the whole thing i like the new brood look wise as a faction they're not that memorable. It's literally just the Hardy Boys and Gangrel. Yeah, and that's the Hollies it. <laughs> are funny here. As for the Hardys, they had some issues with Edge and Christian, and likewise, the chemistry together led to the creation of the Terry Invitation. Terry Runnels' managerial services were supposed to be the reward for the winning team, and of course, $100,000. Once you shorten the Terry Invitational Tournament, you get tit. It was a best of five series. Each side <laughs> traded victories, and it all came down to the final match and no mercy. This was going to be the decider, and to say it was a perfect storm for the two teams would be a massive of understatement. There were multiple years of wrestling had come down to this match. Now what makes this match so good is that it was unexpected. Not to the guys. They knew this was a huge opportunity to make something out of themselves. The WWF didn't do ladder matches often and if I remember mm -hmm. correctly, this was the first ever tag team ladder match. They changed the way the ladder match was viewed. Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon at WrestleMania 10 was absolutely iconic. However, this match blows it out of the water. In general, the world evolves. Everything builds upon something. Here, they changed everything. The ladder match was innovated to greater heights and it gets to a point where nobody could really top them because yeah. since then who can we truly say actually innovated the ladder match to even greater height we can't really say that the hardys and edge and makes a very fair point what the hardys and edge and christian were able to do with some ladders it it i guess you could say it literally shaped what ladder matches are today damn near in every company I'm pretty sure if you ask a wrestling fan, what's their favorite ladder match of all time? I'm sure the Hardys 
are going to be involved in one of their their greatest ladder matches of all time. It's just when you think of Hardy's Team Extreme, you think of ladders, you think of chairs, you think of tables. You know the whole TLC trifecta. Christian, you ask somebody their top five ladder matches, three of them are most likely going to evolve somebody from this match. The spots were grueling and absolutely show steel. You understood that these guys wanted to be in the headline, and these spots were almost mind-blowing in 1999. You have to look at it from that time period's perspective, because the audience wasn't used to action this mm -mm. fast and sudden. It was definitely high risk, but at the same time, it was high reward. For the Hardys, they were victorious that night, but in reality, all four of these men were winning. They received an incredible standing ovation from that crowd, and man, this is low-key one of the most important matches in WWE history. The ladder match was reimagined, and nobody can make a bigger impact with a ladder like Edge and Christian and the Hardys did. They are now mm -hmm. stars in the tag team division. Now, what's odd about this match is that despite making the most noise on the show, being the standout, the four men initially made $5,000. They weren't too happy about it, especially after the road dogs said they should be making at least 30k from it. And so JR Damn. doubled the original bonus, and so in total, they all made 40k. But despite this, there was more value to come out of this match for the four men. The next night on Raw, the winners came out and told Michael Cole that they're not the new brood. The Hardys. Edge and Christian interrupted and the men were quite hostile, but Edge and Christian assured them that they weren't here for that. Edge mentioned how they gave them a standing ovation uh, and the fans followed this. up again. Their appearance here was simply this. out of respect and they shook hands. I remember this segment. That that was that was a monumental moment. He comes out there and uh, we we showed out last night, man. Ah oh, man, bro. <laughs> It's crazy. The only one that's not in AEW is Edge. Everyone else in this in this image right here is in AEW except Edge. Hint. Gangrel, though, was for other reasons. He wanted congratulations for scoring. Edge is like, screw this guy. Goes for this big ass punch and they jumped him. And so <laughs> Matt and Jeff were facing it. Highly deserved. <laughs> they beat the crap out of him. <laughs> standing ovation from the fans. And it was only good from here on. Upon the ladder match, Matt Hardy had made a pitch to the creative team that he wanted a faction alongside his brother. And Edge and Christian. He saw the standing ovation they received and felt that they could grow together. But WWF though saw things differently. He felt that a feud with DX that had reformed at the time would have been nice, but it was the right call. Edge and Christian as rivals elevated the tag team division. Mm -hmm. Now, man, Jeff didn't really do them much. being as a stable, I'm sure it would have worked, but them being as opponents, as rivals, like you said, elevated the tag team division because, yeah, they could have went against DX and the, the new young guys going against the 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 veteran uh you know veteran seasoned wrestlers that's been there for a little bit you know um but i do think them not teaming up made the division so much better because now anytime they have a match they're you know, they're trying to steal the show you know and i i appreciate that that's the right call that's one of them situations they made the right call because we got what we got <laughs> years and years later you know so throughout the rest of the year once 2000 came around though this turned out to be an excellent year for the hearts they kicked off the year in a feud with the dudleys well actually bubba and divan initiated this feud as bubba had an appetite for tables he sent the dude <laughs> through a table and this led to the tag team tables match at the royal rumble the match was incredible especially for something that felt like it was under 10 minutes it was jam-packed to the max it was the perfect representation of matt and jeff hardy going through uh -huh. hell just for an advantage in a match and that image of hardy going for the swan yeah. time is absolutely iconic. They won the match, went on until destroying themselves. The Dudleys were irritated with how the match went, but wanted to show respect to the duo and told them that if they win the titles tonight, they get the first shot. This turned out to be a lie, and Devon and Bubba laid them out. Terry got involved, and since Bubba loved tables, she went through one. Edge and Christian wanted to avenge the duo on SmackDown, and they won the match, but it didn't matter in the end. And this chaos only caused the Dudleys to run into hiding and get the help of the Acolytes. Now, the Acolytes at the time were opening up a protection agency. They were always getting one over the baby faces and even earned a title shot for No Way Out. Terry was concerned over getting involved in some action again, and so she enlisted the help of the APA. This was during the number one contenders match involving the Hardys and Edge and Christian. E and C were tough opposition, of course, but the difference maker was actually Terry, who shoved Jeff Hardy off the top rope. She slapped Matt, and Christian hit the unprettier. Nobody knew what was up, and then the acolytes destroyed them. Hardy and Matt got revenge and moved on. <laughs> they fully focused on the tag team titles. Damn, Edge has been like that since 2000. The Hardy boys made it to the <laughs> final two in a tag team battle royal. However, the Dudleys ruined everything and destroyed the opposition. This meant both teams were inserted into the tag team match oh, at WrestleMania. Man. Tensions built between Edge and Christian and the Hardys during an interview. Edge and Christian grew annoyed with how Matt and Jeff were trying to make everything about themselves. Matt implied that Edge and Christian had more opportunities because they looked like babyfaces. Edge claimed that they made the Hardys famous in their set of matches and 
and this led to the teams costing each other matches. So now Edge and Christian were heels. WrestleMania, mm -hmm. though, was another notch in the tag team's belt. The inclusion of the Dudleys was welcoming because yeah. they brought the element of tables with them. Edge and Christian had the chair and the Hardys, of course, had the ladder. They took that formula they created and went all out again. Zero regard for their own bodies. They may have been hurt that day, but nobody's going to forget this match anytime soon. Facts. With the performance they had... They should be called Shawn Michaels because they stole the show again. There yeah. were so many iconic moments to come yeah. from this match. And for sure, this was one of the best matches of 2000. Edge and Christian emerged victorious this time around and moved on to other things. As for the Hardys, they dabbled in the hardcore division and Matt even won the title. Ultimately though, the title was Crash Hollies. The Hardy Boys were always near the tag team titles, but they weren't making much noise. However, an additional element to the group allowed for the team to fly to greater heights. On the May 25th, 2000 episode of SmackDown, Matt Hardy faced S.A. Rios. Lita had some problems with Rios, who was not valuing their relationship, and Matt accidentally struck her during the match. After the match, Rios dropped her with a powerbomb and moonsault, and the Hardys saw enough and gave him a beating. They carried Lita <laughs> to the back, and this was the beginning of Team Extreme. Lita officially joined the duo a couple of weeks yeah. later and quickly started off a feud with Trish Stratus. This also meant that the Hardys were feuding with TNA. The women's feud was more heated than the men. They had so much hatred for each other in such a short time and the six person tag team match at Fully Loaded was intense. Lita made her mark. She, she was getting involved a lot more than Trish who was interested in picking up the pieces and she showed passion and resiliency to score the victory. But right afterwards, the heels attacked. They left the Hardys laying and Trish ended up whooping the hell out of Lita. It didn't take long for her to pay back the favor, but this feud would be put on hold for the time being. As for Matt and Jeff, it was back to feuding with- It's crazy to think that we may end up getting another, well, we're most likely gonna get another, like, uh, feud with Trish and Lita uh, going forward. I'm sure uh, Lita will come back to assist Becky Lynch going against uh, Zoe Starks and Trish Stratus. So it's crazy to say in 2023, Trish and Lee, they're going to be going at it again at some point later on this year. You know, it may not be in a solos match, a one-on-one, -on -one, but just the fact that they're going to be in a ring together in some, like, tag team capacity, that's crazy. In 2023, we're still going to see these ladies out there. That's insane. <laughs> the Dudleys and Edge and Christian. The title match the next side of the Raw was absolutely chaotic. Everyone barring Edge and Christian looked strong. They had to steal it from out of nowhere and Edge and Christian were basically looking good. You know, they're coming out of these matches unscathed. Mm -hmm. They were cheating. They were stealing these wins. But regardless, they were always escaping with the titles, even if it meant they got disqualified. Here they hit a concerto on Jeff Hardy. Since these guys were leaving their mark and going unscathed. The Dudleys and the Hardys returned the favor using ladders and tables. As a result of this, Edge and Christian laid out Matt Hardy and went on strike and protest of Mick Foley's decisions towards them. He made fun of them but said that they have a point. Then he lowered their expectations by telling them that at SummerSlam, it's going to be Edge and Christian against the Hardys, against the Dudleys, and a TLC match. This was going to be the first TLC match mm. of its kind. Edge and Christian had made it a mission to retain their titles under any circumstances, even if they got themselves disqualified. The Dudleys, the Hardys, everyone was tired of it, and this match was a way of making them pay for their sins. Now, it doesn't need to be said, but yeah. this match was tremendous, and the TLC element makes it better than the last two ladder matches. TLC was somewhat a part of WrestleMania 2000, but not entirely like here. Jeff Hardy, mm -hmm. as expected, it was done. You know, you know what he was doing. He, he did it to himself during this match. And in general, this Jeez. was out of this world. Every second, something crazy would happen. This Matt getting insane. tipped over. Edge spewing some love into Lita that would take five years to kick in. And these guys were hanging on to the belt. This was some action the fans hadn't seen before. Mm -hmm. And there's always a question of how can they top the previous matches. But they do it. They find a way <laughs> to do just that. And in addition, their tag matches are good. Their regular matches are good. But then you have this additional weapon in your arsenal. It's like a cheat code for them. Similar to last time, Edge and Christian's hands were on the belts when it came down to it. Iconic. The boundaries these men were pushing were absolutely incredible. These matches will leave you speechless because of how standout they were in a time where fans really weren't used to action like this. Mm -mm. Team Extreme was quick to rebound with the help of Edge who accidentally gave the Hardys the title shot after blasting Matt with the belt. The champions were fuming but they quickly made a joke out of the Hardys by introducing their future selves via time machine. They even made fun of Lita. Mick Foley put a stop to this and revealed that Edge and Christian will defend the titles in a steel cage match. He then brought out the present day 
Jay Hardy <laughs> who beat the champions out of the ring. This taught them a lesson not to do these types of things in the ring. And this led to one of the funniest Edge and Christian <laughs> segments. They sat in front of a projector and made fun of the Hardys' old wrestling clips. Edge couldn't believe Matt's promo skills deteriorated since then. <laughs> Jeff had zero charisma in their eyes and knowing that they were coming, the champions ambushed them and in the process, Lita bumped her head into the wall. This segment was good. It, it was funny. <laughs> That's funny they use actual footage. <laughs> Edge and Christian were hilarious. Hardys were looking on in disappointment. They were sad. They weren't even that mad. They were almost sad. And I highly recommend you watch the segment if you have. As expected, the seal cage match was pretty good. The Hardys were isolated, and the champions took advantage, locking Jeff out of the ring. Man, Matt was beaten from pillar so to post. So many and was good feuds and matches, bro, man. Just... Take me back. <laughs> Jeff had to ironically use a ladder to climb to the top and enter, and he hit the most Jeff Hardy move ever. A whisper in the wind from the top of the cage. Lead on the outside connected with a head scissors, and on the top of the cage, Edge got a taste of his own medicine with a concerto, and that was enough for the victory. Hardys were new champions, and again, these teams show their level of depth. They could wrestle normal matches, they could wrestle ladder matches, mm -hmm. they could wrestle steel cage matches. And this is another good match. It was fresh. The next night on Raw, the first episode on TNN, Mick Foley wanted a historic match. So he made Edge and Christian's rematch a ladder match. This was only 24 hours after that grueling Insane. steel cage match. Now I don't need to tell you how good this was. Edge and Christian in a ladder match against the Hardys, that says it all. They were still finding creative spots even though they had like four of these matches before. And it's hard to say whether these guys were actually injured from the cage match or they were selling these injuries well. But regardless, they had the heart to put on another match of the night. The Hardys went through it here, especially Matt Hardy who had to put on a gutsy performance to score the victory. Even Lito was banged up by the end of it. What this also meant was that Edge and Christian couldn't challenge for the titles. So they were desperate to cost Matt and Jeff to get themselves a match. This led to Los Conquistadores returning and they assaulted the Hardys and nearly cost them the titles on two occasions. At the same time, they got themselves a title shot for no mercy. Edge and Christian wished them luck and when asked about their strategy for the match, they responded saying, Si, senor, and of course, arriba. The Conquistadors showed shades of Edge and Christian. The champions mm -hmm. realized what's up, but they had additional masks under, and Matt <laughs> took an unprettier, which meant they lost the titles. The accusations were starting to be made, and Edge and Christian tried offering a rebuttal with physical evidence. They asked for a title shot, and when they received it, they were more worried about choosing which sunglasses they should wear to the ring. Christian got ambushed by the Dudleys, and Edge, despite this, felt confident that he could take on the Conquistadors alone. They didn't follow up on the promise and it turned out to be the Hardys. Mick Foley then revealed that the cameraman earlier on left the camera and the details of their plans were exposed. Then he got their hopes up saying their title victory counted only to drag them down saying it's one of the shortest title reigns of all time. So now, Matt and Jeff Hardy, the Hardy boys, <laughs> are the new champions. The Hardys had seemed to have steered... That's such a convoluted way <laughs> to give them the championship right back, but... <laughs> past Edge and Christian, but they once again got in their business during a title match with the right to censor. Stevie Richards took advantage of this drama and helped his guys capture the tag team titles. Lita and Ivory had issues with the title as well. The Hardys had issues with RTC over titles, and this made its way to Survivor Series. Lita was all bloody during this title match. She didn't capture the gold. And RTC won the elimination match, but then the Dudleys returned after the match and dropped the heels. The real feud, though, was with the Radicals. These two sides had so much hatred for one another after Lita's head was bumped into a door that was aggressively opened by Chris Benoit. Deep down within, though, Dean Malenko had an entirely different feeling for Lita. Benoit told him that she's just another broad, but Malenko didn't see it that way and to his own detriment because Lita wasn't interested. He was too naive and believed he had a chance and even offered Lita a title shot. If he wins, she has to go on a date with him though. Lita put up a fight but when Malenko wanted to wrap it up, he did it with ease. The date itself was initially rough but Lita let her guard down and she admitted that she couldn't resist Malenko. Mr. Rockefeller, as he called himself, was met with the Hardy Boys at the hotel <laughs> and they obliterated him. It wasn't all bad for Malenko though because he rebounded at Armageddon and rocked Lita. Even then he upgraded his perf stats and almost had his career ended after the Hardys caught him staring at Lita in the shower. Even then, he was still interested in her. It was a weird dynamic where he'd beat her up and show affection at the same time. This reached a boiling point with Lita once again challenging Malenko. This time with the help of Matt Hardy, she emerged victorious. And to top it all off, they kissed after the match, and so now it was revealed that Matt and Lita were officially in a relationship. As always, the Hardys couldn't remain away from the Dudleys and Edge and Christian. 
On the March 5th, 2001 episode of Raw, the duel captured the tag team titles with the help of Christian. This title run didn't even make it to WrestleMania because ENC recaptured the gold after Rhino made his debut and gored Jeff Hardy leading to the title change. The Dudleys were supposed to receive the title shot, but after their flight was delayed, it was given to those two. Upon their arrival, they demanded their match and received it. Spike Dudley debuted during the match and it led to the Hardys winning the titles. So it was Hot Potato heading into WrestleMania. Mm. WrestleMania 17 in Houston was the apex, mm. the peak of what was known as the Golden Era. <sighs> One of my favorite WrestleManias of all time. Y'all know this. This this match alone, damn near, almost stole the show. Just just fantastic of this tag team division. The work these three teams put in was for this match and moment. TLC 2 is no doubt about it, the greatest TLC match in WWE history. I've watched this match countless times and it has never failed to entertain me. It's hard to follow up on the previous ladder matches, but they did just that on three different occasions. How? I don't know. But a minor aspect about this match comes down to each team playing an excellent role in the match. The mm -hmm. Dudleys you expected were here. Hardy's they were here. Edge and Christian were here, not to mention the additional interferences. It was extremely different to what had been seen in the previous matches. Different kind of athleticism, different spots, everything. It was nothing short of iconic, and like the WWF in general at the time, it wasn't going to get any better in the tag team division, especially mm -hmm. after putting on a match like that on the biggest stage in wrestling. It's not overrated in the slightest. It's nope. influential. And a huge highlight in all six of their careers, and it helped them achieve legend status Facts. in the tag team division. Edge Facts. and Christian emerged victorious by the skin of their teeth with the help of Rhino, who turned out to be the difference maker. But in many ways, this marked the end of Edge and Christian and the Hardys' feud. They did have one more match later on, TLC3, but the feud wasn't as intense as it once was. As for Matt and Jeff, they finally met with the top of the WWF as Vince booked the Hardys in a six person tag team match against Stone Cold, Triple H, and Stephanie McMahon. This mm -hmm. came after Lita was caught talking to Linda. That main event was heat. Lita won the match for the Hardys, and after the match, Austin and oh Triple H began God. beating up on her like this she was the number one contender to the title. It was very violent, and they were so, so desperate violent. to establish this new Stone Cold character as a cold-hearted heel. Like, we all know Austin's a cold-hearted face previously, but he was very, very different here. And Jeff Hardy took advantage of his long-ass promo to blast both him and the game <laughs> of a steel chair and drop Stephanie with a twist of fate. Triple H was so fired up over this that he demanded a match even if it was for the title. He received his request and dominated. Hardy was without his brother and Lita who were away. Sometimes mm -hmm. he would find some momentum and Triple H would bend the rules to take advantage. Turns out Matt was there. He interfered and blasted Triple H with a chair before Jeff hit the swanton to win that title. One of the greatest upsets mm -hmm. in WWF history, especially the moment. When you look at the crowd, they doubted the result, but it happened and Jeff Hardy was champion. He even said in an interview that Triple H... Oh man, bro. This, this is... Oof. It's just crazy where they started as just jobbers to becoming tag team champs to having these legendary TLC matches and tag team matches to now being in some main event profile situations with the top guys in the company. Crazy how everything just started and then it just snowballed into something bigger, man. Place told him that he hopes to make a lot of money with him in the future. He saw the potential in Jeff Hardy, no wonder, it's clear why. Team Extreme in general around this time period were so damn cool because of their look, what they did, and what they represented. The fans gravitated towards that. You knew that these guys were for real. As mm -hmm. for the title victory, Hardy didn't hold the title for long as Triple H reclaimed the gold on Raw. They once again tried to assault Lita, but this time around, the Brothers of Destruction, looking like the final bosses, came out and <laughs> saved Lita. This fizzled out, and meanwhile, Matt Hardy became the European champion. He beat Eddie Guerrero for the gold, and this led to a storyline of trust. You see, Eddie was desperate to gain the Hardys' trust. They weren't eager to let their guard down, especially for him, and Eddie even went as far as to turn on the Radicals. At one point, he risked himself for Lita's safety. And this storyline ended up being dropped as Eddie Guerrero went to rehab. Now, my personal mm. prediction is that he probably would have tried to drive a wedge between Lita and the Hardys, something a bit similar to Malenko. Around mm -hmm. the same time period, the three teams that elevated the ladder match to greater heights were going to do it one more time. This time, it was TLC3 on SmackDown. Chris Benoit and Chris Jericho, though, were the additional team. 
Vince wanted to put those men through hell after they captured the gold from the two-man power trip. And this match, once again, is a prime example of the sacrifices that these wrestlers were willing to make. Yeah. Some of the spots around here were rough, and I'm sure it didn't feel good for Edge to get locked in the walls or for Christian to get tipped over without adjusting himself. And again, creative spots which almost leave you amazed and have you wondering, like, how? I was about to say <laughs> it was a quiet match for the Hardys, but then they did this. Jericho yeah. and Benoit emerged victorious but suffered the most during the match. And that was it for the Edge and Christian and Hardy Boys arc. As for Matt and Jeff, Jeff won the light heavyweight championship holding the gold for three weeks. He ended up winning the hardcore title and having a great feud with Rob Van Dam who was a part of the alliance. Their matches were absolutely amazing and the styles matched well. And I always have fun watching their matches. They're just so damn good. Three matches. The Hardy Boys' time as a successful team was slowly winding down, but they weren't going to go out bad. They won the WCW Tag Team Championships holding them for three weeks before the Dudleys claimed the gold. They then won the WWF Tag Team Championships to set up a clash against the Dudley Boys at Survivor Series inside a steel cage. Winner take all. It was a pretty good match, but it had long-term effects on the Hardy Boys. For one, it was the tag team in a nutshell. Blowing mm -hmm. a good thing. They were champions. They had the match one yet. Jeff felt the need to go for the dive again. And this cost them the match. And it was the beginning of the end of the Hardy Boys. Jeff proceeded to make the same mistake against Christian for the European title. And Matt told him that he's stupid. Jeff felt that he was controlling and the team was falling apart. Tensions mm. were building between the two brothers. Even in victory. And this led to a one-on-one -on -one match for vengeance. At one point an argument between the two led to them shoving Lita. And Matt complained about her not taking his side. So he asked her to be the referee to prove she doesn't choose sides. They both cheated during that match. And it all came down to a controversial finish with Lita not noticing Matt's foot on the rope. This meant more drama. He had been mm -hmm. bitter throughout this whole entire thing and it increased tenfold. He challenged Jeff and Lita to a handicap match and told her that like the Hardy Boys, they're breaking up. Man was going all out. He rolled up Lita for the win here, but the storyline would transition back to a Hardy Boys reunion. Now, I personally get why they would start a breakup story, but there was a little bit left for the team at this point. Yeah. The Undertaker threw both Jeff and Lita off the stage, which <laughs> enraged Matt Hardy, and this caused the Hardys to reunite to combat The Undertaker. Mm -hmm. It brought them closer together to get their asses kicked. The Hardy boys were <laughs> yep. rejuvenated in the division, but when you look back in hindsight, it's clear they weren't the same. Not because of them particularly. You know, they were popular. They were popular. They were having the same matches. You know, they weren't bad. But because WWF didn't seem to focus as hard on them as they used to. Brock mm -hmm. Lesnar debuted and absolutely dominated the two Yeesh. men. And now learning their lesson, they decided to provoke The Undertaker, who wasn't all about that. This led to an incredible ladder match for the yes. Undisputed Championship. And Jeff Hardy, despite the chances of him getting his ass beaten, were 99%, made everyone <laughs> believe the fans were all in Jarrett's. This was one of the best matches on Monday Night Raw, bro. They made... Jeff was already a star. But this was the thing that really was pushing people, especially this match, this performance, how it went, the, the calling of the match by JR. This really pushed it to that next level for him. Like, he could be WWE champion one day. Like, this was great. This was Fan, this was star making. He was already a star. This was main event star making power right here. His commentary was excellent. He's like, make yourself famous, kid. And Jeff Hardy's gutsy performance, despite falling short, earned the respect of The Undertaker, who, despite dropping him every time, would ask for more. This momentum that Hardy had from this match led to him becoming the European champion. Mm -hmm. Hardy was the last European champion, and the title was unified with the Hardcore Championship a couple of weeks later. Jeff fell short to RVD, which is the story of his career, basically. Matt Hardy, meanwhile, wasn't around as he was wrestling on heat, and Lita suffered a neck injury that left her sidelined for over a year. On the August 5th, 2002 episode of Raw, the Hardys returned to action. It looked like the duel was going to feud with the Un-Americans, but that wasn't the case. With SummerSlam on the horizon, Eric Bischoff wanted Rob Van Dam to face Chris Ben for the Intercontinental Championship. Matt and Jeff were standing in front and Matt in particular had a problem with this. Bischoff claimed to not know his name but ended up giving the Hardys a title shot. It was only going to be one of them though and it was going to be decided by a coin toss. Not even. He just put the coin on his hand and decided it was heads <laughs> and Jeff gets the shot. Matt ended up turning on him and costing mm -hmm. him the match and later that week he signed with SmackDown. Matt didn't want to live in the shadow of his brother and he was like you know what I'm out of here. And he immediately became Matt Hardy version 1. All right, that's the hardest story. Damn. They, they really <laughs> had a great run. TLC 1, 2, 3. The popularity from the fans. Everything. These guys were doing everything. They wrestled each other for the hardcore title. They wrestled each other on pay-per-view. They won the titles on multiple occasions, mm -hmm. and it was a great run. What makes it so good is that the Hardys brought life to the tag team division. It wasn't dead 
straight up or anything like mm-hmm. that. But at the time, there wasn't many big notable tag teams other than the New Age Outlaws and the Acolytes. Edge and Christian coming along, along with the Dudleys, helped bring more interest to the division. They elevated the division to greater heights. You saw tag teams fighting it out in ladder and TLC matches. You've never seen that before. It wasn't happening, but these guys were doing it, and they were doing it at such a high level, which is also a bad thing because them wrestling these matches, these grueling matches, they had this expectation at top of the last match, Mm -hmm. and in turn, it would hurt them, and slowly the injuries would pile up to a point where it's like these matches aren't sustainable. Yeah. But as good as those matches were, they were bad for the guys in the matches. But yeah, I love the Hardys. They're one of my favorite tag teams of all time. What makes them so good is everything. You know, like their matches, <laughs> they had unique offense, senton bombs, diving off ladders, the whole tables thing, the look, Lita being the missing piece of the group. Everything about them was perfect. And they ended at the right time. You know, like obviously they couldn't have gone till 2003 as the hardy boys like they're gonna get cheered a bit here and there but it was best to end it at that point because both men needed to go their separate ways Mm -hmm. for the time being because at the end of the day they're brothers they're obviously not gonna deviate away from each other and they were bound to reunite but at that time it was best for them to split especially for matt hardy you know matt hardy had to forge his own path because at the time he was falling down a bit he was resting on heat and this gave him the opportunity to go to smackdown to become matt hardy version one so yeah all right what'd you guys think of the hardy boy hey man this was a great video. I'm going to go ahead and give this a like. Y'all go ahead and give it a like if you haven't already seen it. This was fantastic. The Hardy Boys, like I said at the beginning of this video, is um, the, one of the most influential tag teams of all time. Some of your favorite tag teams have been inspired by the Hardy Boys, by Team Extreme. And they showed you why they, they should have been taken seriously. They love the business. They put their bodies on the line to entertain us in a time where there was a lot of there was a lot of top tier talent. And tag team wrestling, like he said, wasn't what it used to be. And for them to bring that excitement to the tag team division and really damn near sometimes like steal the show from, you know, potential like top guys like we're talking about the stone colds the rocks the 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 triple h's you know we're talking about the undertakers the canes in their prime the kurt angles and the steel have people like give you standing ovations when your match come up or have people you know like fondly remember your match on some of these high profile cards is truly impressive like i said future hall of famers what else is there to say about this the Hardys, the goats, man. So comment down below. Let me know what's your favorite, favorite Hardy Boys match. Like whatever match it was in, they were in TLC one, two, or three, whatever. What's your favorite Hardy Boys match, man, that they were involved in? Let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support. You guys are showing on channel Road to 150K. I'm still getting the speed of YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.